Good morning. Welcome to my channel, Temples of Jesus. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful conference weekend. It was amazing. I want to talk about conference in another video this morning. I want to focus on reading the scriptures. Um, I did want to clarify uh, a couple of things um, or just expound on. I was so grateful to have that interview or not interview, but that co um, collaboration with Jared from Christian Homestead uh, regarding um, the words of the living prophet. And God has imperfect people to work through, meaning myself and Jared and any of us who are trying to use our influence in truly righteous, pure ways to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and 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 joy and love to anyone that we're able to. And I'm not going to be for everybody. I'm not going to articulate my thoughts and ideas as they're always intended. Um, and that's talked about too in the scriptures in different places about how the feelings and, and the desires of the heart, like they're not even able to write them um, sometimes because they're too sacred, but that's not what I'm talking about when uh, they just cannot quite get it in the, in the spoken or written language. And so I would just pray that we as Christians and saints of Christ give each other the benefit of the doubt and to look for the positive in in the messages of what people are trying to do and to not try and tear down or, or find the things to contend about. Um, of course, to share your opinion and um, to do it with loving kindness as, as, as God our Father does as we try and progress to be more like Jesus and more like Heavenly Father. And so in me setting that up, I wanted to share that our video presentation that we gave the other day about the importance and focus on the living prophet who is currently President Russell M. Nelson, which of course will not always be, is not that his words and direction and the current first presidency and the current apostles are the only living scripture. There is great importance and complete fullness and truth in the Book of Mormon and in the Bible and in the Doctrine and Covenants and in things that past prophets while they were living were saying. And there was zero intention of putting those down, disregarding them, saying they are of not, or degrading them. I could go on and on, and I could have done better as an imperfect person reaching for following a prompting I had personally to focus on that topic from observations that I've had from people that I care about and other saints in the church who I don't know, but who I love and I want to return to Heavenly Father. And it seems that there may be a slippery slope, that there is a higher weight on things that were said in a different time for a different people and a different circumstance than what is currently being said. And so the, the purpose of the video and the topic was to share the priesthood keys and authority of now and the stewardship and the revelation and how important personal revelation is and how personal revelation 
according to our current living prophet and previous prophets and scripture are that we as saints will not, especially in mass, we will not be receiving personal revelation that contradicts and goes against what the commandments and the doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ are. And that for now, in our time, today, if our current living prophet is clarifying or expounding on previous prophets, revelations, words, expounding on or clarifying or discovering new meaning to our scriptures, that we then look to that and take that as the authority of clarification and that our living prophet with the first presidency and the quorum of the 12 apostles have the active priesthood keys and authority to also receive new revelation for us today. So I wanted to be very clear both that I am an imperfect person and you are as well. And I would ask for mercy and love and grace and understanding and look for the good and not the errors and the mistakes or the perceived misunderstandings and celebrate others in comments or conversations about how wrong other saints are. But most importantly, I wanted to clarify and share my testimony that our scriptures are true. We believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it is translated correctly. And we believe the Book of Mormon to be the word of God that will lead us to salvation and the doctrine and covenants that gives us the further information for exaltation. And that each of our current dispensation prophets, while prophets at the time, that their words are living scripture. And that it, at any point while I am alive, the current living prophet, new revelation given to those leaders, clarification, expounding upon, direction coming from, that is from Jesus Christ directly to us today. And so there is a higher weight according to all of those sources that we, and let's minus we, that I will take without question, which might be triggering for some people, without question, maybe with challenge, Maybe with, uh, I, I don't know about that, but I will not take it to God and ask him if that revelation is correct or not. I will take it to God if I'm in that circumstance and I will say, I, under, I understand that I don't understand yet and please help me in this time to give me comfort and peace about this. And if I desire it, because it's a righteous desire, please help me to understand whether it's now or whether it's in the near future. So that way I may be 
a stronger disciple of Christ to testify to others of my brothers and sisters, of God's children, to help them with whatever that revelation or clarification may be. But there is a higher weight and priority on what comes from our current living prophet. And that does not mean that I am saying, and I can speak on behalf of Jared as well, and he will come and correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. He absolutely is not saying, put aside the scriptures, put aside what past, past prophets have said. That's no longer applicable. That is not the intention of the message that we shared on Friday. It was to help show that to be successful in our spiritual journey back to Heavenly Father and in helping each other, that we should not talk down on, we should not have communi communities about where we support each other in talking down on the brethren and the way that the organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is heading and finding the negative and finding the faults because that is not us being disciples of Christ and helping the cause. That is, I'm not going to expound on that. So I hope that, I hope that what I'm trying to portray right now is crystal clear. And I say it with all love and with prayer and, and with a pure heart and with pure intentions. And yes, we were using past prophets, doctrine, and scriptures to support the message because those things are applicable and relevant. And the doctrine of, of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ and that when you need guidance, what the living prophet is saying right now for our day has the heaviest weight that you should grab onto or that I am going to choose to grab onto. So thank you for allowing me those few moments. I hope I didn't come across as too strong or direct or defensive. Let's move on if you're willing, to Daily Joy from our devotional for each day of the year from Russell M. Nelson, who uses a scripture, a previous scripture from past prophets to then talk about. Um, we missed October 2nd, so I'm going to go ahead and do yesterday's. The title is The Savior's Power. Second Nephi, chapter 11, verse 5. Funny, we're going to be reading that in just a minute. And also my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord. Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace and in his justice and power and mercy in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. President Nelson shares. Every woman and every man who makes covenants with God and keeps those covenants and who participates worthily in priesthood ordinances has direct access to the power of God. Those who are endowed in the house of the Lord receive a gift of God's priesthood power by virtue of their covenant, along with a gift of knowledge to know how to draw upon that power. The heavens are just as open to women who are endowed with God's power flowing from their priesthood covenants as they are to men who bear the priesthood. I pray that truth will register upon each of your hearts because I believe it will change your life. Sisters, you have the right to draw liberally upon the Savior's power to help your family and others you love. I didn't 
I didn't read that ahead of time. I'm sorry. I didn't read that ahead of time today. And I'm glad I didn't do the third, but I did um, October 2nd because I have such a strong testimony right now in my current situation in life. And I'm so grateful for my endowment that I received earlier this year. There is true power. I have priesthood power. I do not hold the office of priesthood. I understand the difference. But I do have access to priesthood power. And my garments and my covenants and my promises and my initiatory, it's a night and day difference from whatever my exact date was, from March 25th to March 22nd, 26th and on to now today of the power and strength and the access that I have to God to lead my family spiritually while my husband is not yet in that place. And once he's in that place, he and I will be yoked equally as leaders in our home. So I really appreciate our living prophet because that was not a previous message that was shared or clarified in the past. And now we have that clarification, which is an incredible strength and blessing. Today, we're going to be reading from 1st Nephi chapter 11. I welcome your comments and I welcome your emails. Please keep them kind. Let them be in dis disagreement, but please let them be in a, in a, in a, We're all people on the internet. We're real life people. Um, and I know and knew that starting a YouTube channel, which I don't care to be doing. I've got lots of other things to be doing. God has prompted me for this time to be doing this. So I'm doing it because I will follow him. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, I needed to pause for just a minute to um, take a phone call. So chapter 11, uh, I we were going to do chapter 11 through, I think, 14 today, because I figured that if I do at least four days a week through the end of the year, we need to do 10 pages a day, which I know sounds like a lot, but it'll be 30 to 40 minutes if I'm not chatting too much in those specific videos. Um, but I have, I, I have an appointment to be at, and so we might just get through chapter 11 this morning. Chapter 11. Oh, I'm actually going to share my screen today. Share screen. I am a child of God, and he has sent me here, has given me a nursery home with parents kind and dear. What's going on up here? Lead me, guide me, walk beside me, help me find the way. Teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. That's just that we sing both verses of that before our little family prayer this morning. Because the kids have teacher time in just a few minutes. I gotta get out of here. So chapter 11 of First Nephi, the Book of Mormon. Nephi sees the spirit of the Lord and is shown in vision the tree of life. He sees the mother of the Son of God and learns of the cond condescension of God. He sees the baptism, ministry, and crucifixion of the Lamb of God. He, also, he sees also the call and ministry of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Um, we're still in about 600 to 592 BC, those eight those eight years here. For it came to pass after I had desired to know the things that my father had seen, and believing that the Lord was able to make them known unto me, as I sat pondering in my heart, I was caught away in the spirit of the Lord, yea, into an exceedingly high mountain, which I never had before seen, and upon which I never had before set my foot. And the spirit said unto me, behold, what desirest thou? And I said, I desire to behold the things which my father saw. And the spirit said unto me, believest thou that thy father saw the tree of which he hath spoken? And I said, yea. 
thou knowest that I believe all the words of my father. And when I had spoken these words, the spirit cried with a loud voice saying, Hosanna to the Lord. Oh my gosh. And when I had spoken these words, the spirit cried with a loud voice saying, Hosanna to the Lord, the most high God. I have chills for he is God over all the earth. Yea, even above all. And blessed art thou Nephi, because thou believest in the son of the most high God. Wherefore thou shalt behold the things which thou hast desired. Ah, oh, we just, I got to keep reading and reading the Book of Mormon. I think this is my third reading, second, third reading. I think I read once as a, you know, as a child or a teen. And then once with Jason a couple years ago during our conversion, which was like, we missed so much stuff, but we were feeling the spirit of the goodness. But now it's like I have different eyes to see and it's, it's amazing. Okay, sorry. Um, Nephi, because thou believest in the Son of the Most High God, wherefore thou shalt behold the things which thou hast desired. Seven. And behold, this thing shall be given unto thee for a sign. And after thou hast beheld the tree which bore the fruit which thy father tasted, thou shalt also behold a man descending out of heaven. And him shall ye witness. And after ye have witnessed him, ye shall bear record that it is the Son of God. Man, wasn't that video yesterday amazing? So I didn't want to talk about conference right now, but just pausing for a quick moment since we're just going to read chapter 11 for this morning. This conference was special in lots of ways. Loved Sister Yi's talk. Lo loved everybody's talk. Um, I made a really brief video yesterday or the, on Saturday about some of my initial thoughts from the first few talks, which riled some people up but whatever it's it's my truth and and i'm not going to go there so um i'm so grateful for the speakers and for the messages and the spirit and the revelation that was shared i don't remember uh because we watched it kind of out of order because we've got kids and we had to rewind and what have you so anyways i i don't think that elder bednar was right before President Nelson, but maybe he was in the morning session. I feel like he maybe was. Anyways, I, in retrospect, first off, Elder Bednar, and I'm sorry if I have it, the wrong person, but I'm almost sure it was Elder Bednar who talked about the 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 the. the it starts with a P. No, yeah, the parable. Sorry, the parable of the marriage feast and honestly i'd never heard it in the way that he presented it before and maybe it's a different parable than the ten virgins um as you can see I, I still have a lot to learn about about the gospel and the scriptures still quite a bit um but the parable he shared was different than i had heard before and it was powerful and strong and i do understand about you know the church being being the the bride and and jesus christ you know being the groom and the strength of that talk and that parable in retrospect i thought you know what that is a call and i know many people are feeling i think very similar impressions and things that is that is the call for us to be ready like now um, not saying Jesus is coming today, but man, that conference, Jesus is coming. Maybe next year, maybe in eight years, but I think, I think for sure in this next 12 to 15 years, which, which is soon not excited that I'll be in my fifties or 60, but whatever. That's so, <laughs> that's so beside the point. Okay. Back on track, Mindy. I've not had any breakfast yet. Um, it was, a, it was, it was like the call. It was a call for us to be prepared. The, 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 the bridegroom is coming and, and we need to have our proper respectful hearts and garments, you know, wedding garment on and, and with the righteousness. 
so I don't want to get all into that, but just that his talk was so powerful. And I think a specific call, like an official call, that is my opinion and my, my interpretation. I had a strong impression for myself that President Nelson, right before his apostolic blessing in his main long, longer talk, which I've only viewed once so far, uh, in the moment, not in retrospect, but in the moment, felt as though this was an official call, an official declaration that we are now to be the Zion people. And I've had a sense, and it has been being taught for quite a time, that we need to be pure in heart and become the Zion people. So this is not a brand new idea. It was my sense. And, and also, I've had my own testimony that I've shared at church, and, you know, right or wrong, whatever, of, you know, that that we shouldn't wait to have a call. Like, we shouldn't wait for God to come out and say, you now need to be a Zion people, or now you are a Zion people, but that we should individually in our own hearts become a Zion people, just like with the gathering of Israel. Like we need to gather ourselves first, letting God prevail. And then to our families and our friends and our influence and our ward members and our neighbors. Um, so similar idea, but that um, the call to Zion of now we are being called to be that Zion people right now to come together in a larger body of people throughout the world when christ comes that zion people needs to be ready there in existence known and for me my impression was this was an official declaration and an official call for that i just want to share those two things are we in eight or nine eight and it came to pass that the spirit said unto me, look, and I looked and beheld a tree and it was like unto the tree, which my father had seen. And the beauty thereof was far beyond, yea, exceeding of all beauty. And the whiteness thereof did exceed the whiteness of the driven snow. And it came to pass after I had seen the tree, I said unto the spirit, I behold that I behold thou hast shown unto me the tree, which is precious above all and he said unto me, what desirest thou? And I said unto him to know the interpretation thereof, for I spake unto him as a man speaketh, for I beheld that he was in the form of a man. So was this the Holy Ghost? Gordon, was this the Holy Ghost? <laughs> um, I didn't mean that sarcastically. I looked to Gordon as my, as, as my mentor of spiritual knowledge and his interpretation and wisdom um, was in the form of a man yet nevertheless I knew that it was the spirit of the Lord Ugh, you guys know I do this every time okay it was the Holy Ghost and he spake unto me as a man speaketh with another and it came to pass that he said unto me look and I looked as if to look upon him and I saw him not for he had gone from before my presence and it came to pass that I looked and beheld the great city of Jerusalem and also other cities and I beheld the city of Nazareth and in the city of Nazareth, I beheld a virgin and she was exceedingly fair and white. And it came to pass that I saw the heavens open and an angel came down and stood before me. And he said unto me, Nephi, what beholdest thou? And I said unto him, a virgin, most beautiful and fair above all other virgins. And he said unto me, knowest thou the condescent condescension of God? I always forget, like, don't understand what this word means. And the angel said to me, I've been looking to Jesus Christ's condensation of, okay, I'm going to look it up separately. I'm running out of time. And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. And I actually, in my hard copy, I have this in pink with like a pink heart. I don't know if that was recently or when I was a child. I think it was actually recently when Jason and I read two years ago. And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. 
And he said unto me, Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of the Son of God after the manner of the flesh. And it came to pass that I beheld that she was carried away in the spirit. And after she had been carried away in the spirit for the space of a time, the angel spake unto me, saying, Look. And I looked and beheld the virgin again, bearing a child in her arms. And the angel said unto me, Behold, the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father, now is though the meaning of the tree which thy father saw. And I answered him, saying, yea it, is the, yea, it is the love of God, which sheddeth itself abroad in the hearts of the children of men. Wherefore, it is the most desirable of all things. And he spake unto me, saying, Yea, and the most joyous of two souls. And after he had said these words, he said unto me, Look, and I looked, and I beheld the Son of God going forth among the children of men. And I saw many fall down at his feet and worship him. And it came to pass that I beheld that the rod of iron which my father had seen was the word of God, which led to the fountain of living waters or to the tree of life, which waters are a representation of the love of God. And I also beheld that the tree of life was a representation of the love of God. And the angel said unto me again, look and behold the condescension of God. I have to figure out what that word means. And I looked and beheld the redeemer of the world of whom my father had spoken. And I also beheld the prophet who should prepare the way before him. And the lamb of God went forth and was baptized of him. And after he was baptized, I beheld the heavens open and the Holy Ghost come down out of heaven and abide upon him in the form of a dove. Seriously, like what is going on? I swear it looks cute in person. It just looks weird in video. ADHD, y'all, just, it, it's a superpower and, a, and, and like squirrel. And I beheld that he went forth ministering unto the people in power and great glory. And the multitudes were gathered together to hear him. And I beheld they cast him out from among them. Sorry. And I also beheld 12 others following him. And it came to pass that they were carried away in the spirit from before my face. And I saw them not. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me again, saying, look. And I looked and I beheld the heavens open again. And I saw angels descending upon the children of men and they did minister unto them. And he spake unto me again, saying, look. And I looked and I beheld the lamb of God going forth among the children of men. And I beheld multitudes of people who were sick and who were afflicted with all manner of diseases. And with devils and unclean spirits, and the angels spake and showed all these things unto me, and they were healed by the power of the Lamb of God. You guys, I'm not a crier. I'm not. It's, it's just, I don't cry. There's nothing wrong with crying. I just don't. And the devils and the unclean spirits were cast out, and it came to pass that the angels spake unto me again, saying, Look, and I be, and I looked and beheld the Lamb of God, that he was taken by the people. Yea, the Son of the everlasting God was judged of the world, and I saw him bear record. And I, Nephi, saw that he was lifted up upon the cross and slain for the sins of the world. And after he was slain, I saw the multitudes of the earth, that they were gathered together to fight against the apostles of the Lamb. For thus were the twelve called by the angel of the Lord. And the multitude of the earth was gathered together. And I beheld that they were in a large and spacious building, like unto the building which my father saw. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me again, saying, Behold the world and the wisdom thereof. Yea, behold the house of Israel hath gathered together to fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Oh, thank goodness we're at the end. Sorry. <laughs> and it came to pass that I saw and bear record that the great and spacious building was the pride of the world, and it fell, and the fall thereof was exceedingly great. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me again, saying, Thus shall be the destruction of all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, that shall fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I love you guys. Have a blessed day. And uh, I... And... 
verse 17, and I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. I testify that I know that he loveth me as his child, as a child of the covenant and as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I know that he loveth his children and you are his children. So he loves you. Nevertheless, in humility, but with pure desires and intentions and with my limited skills and knowledge, I will continue to share and have influence through the strength and the love and the power of God. Even though I do not know the meaning of all things. And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Have a wonderful day. Love you, friends. Goodbye. Well, you know, now I have to figure out how to stop screen share. I love to see the temple and the embrace my way to fill the Holy Spirit to whisper and to pray for the temple is the house of God a place of love and beauty I'll prepare myself while I am 41 this is my sacred duty